I'm Sarah Frisk. And uh, we're going to talk about Star Wars, because that's how we really met, was talking about Star Wars. George Lucas has said that Star Wars is for boys, it's not for girls. Well, then what about all the girls that like Star Wars? Clearly we don't actually exist, and we're not part of the targeted demographic. Princess Leia is not exactly the, you know, by today's standards, an awesomely strong female character. But by the standards of the late 1970s, she was. And the other thing about Princess Leia was, not so much that her actions, but her attitude was something that was very different at the time. She was strong-willed, opinionated, was not afraid to state those opinions. So that was something different. You didn't see that in a lot of, uh, certainly in the sci-fi genre, you did not see that very often. She was a damsel in distress, but she was going to get a couple one-liners at you first. She was a you pissy know, damsel in distress. She the entire planet get destroyed. She makes a quip about the man who kills them smell. And as she's being rescued, the entire time she's critiquing the rescue. I mean, so that's just, it is, a, it is a different perspective on the whole damsel and the stress thing. I mean, she's not even that grateful that she's being rescued. It's all like, what kind of rescue is this? I could do a better rescue than this kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, well, I already kind of accepted I was going to die. And yes, I am kind of happy I'm not going to, but this is not how I imagined it. Right. Look at the whole Star Wars trilogy like the original Star Wars trilogy, that she is pretty strong in the first movie. I right. mean, if you ignore the fact that she got captured. But even if you did, you figured that she got captured, she was tortured mentally, she was tortured physically, still managed to never reveal where the plans to everything was. And then goes from being that person who's a leader in the rebellion and is pretty much one of the top people in charge, to being a slave girl at the end of a chain held by a giant slug and is pretty much doesn't even know who the general's upcoming battle is going to be. So she's surprised to find out that Han Solo is leading a top secret task force. Well, so. I think that I think that was a, a last minute plot development. Like, I don't even think Han Solo was aware of that fact until it happened. Yeah. But, you know, then she does wind up being one of the leaders on the, the Endor mission and and, and gets captured by Ewoks. Yes, but she bonds with them and ultimately helps to create the alliance between and wearing the wearing a dress and getting her hair out and getting out of the commando outfit. They managed to find enough material to make her a dress. At least uh, what happens to Princess Leia is not nearly as bad as what happens to Padme in the new trilogy, where she starts out as a strong character and winds up becoming a whiny, emo woman. Maybe pregnancy hormones are just insane in the Star Wars universe to turn them into a crying sob fest who loses the will to live. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the fact that they had her die of a broken heart, it's like, are you kidding me? Are you yeah, kidding I me? I, I read the book before I read the movie, and I actually assumed that it was just, like, from... Anakin thwacking her against a bunch of stuff when he was yelling at her. I was like, oh, clearly she's actually got internal organ damage and therefore died, and this makes sense. No. Nope. Except for then you watch the movie and they're like, oh, she's lost the will to live. And I'm like, you're in a top state of the art medical facility. How the hell do you not have the ability to like deal with this? But, I mean, no choice in this matter. You know, the Siths are able to rebuild uh, Darth Vader. Like, why can't they... Half a body. <laughs> and yet you can't do a little CPR and save Padme. Yeah. Clearly aware enough to name her kids as they're popping out. And look at them, and it's like, oh, I've had these things for nine months, but I don't care. The Jedi can take them. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think seeing your own children for the first time, that should give you the will to live, even if your hubby has just gone evil. You would yeah. think you would want to protect your children from your now evil husband. Yeah, no, it, I also got really frustrated, too, because, like I said, I read the book before I saw the movie, and there are all these scenes that they took out of the movie that are actually, you know, you have deleted versions of them, that is actually her maneuvering to try to get Palpatine out of power and her political aspect, like this whole political plot 
strengthens her character out of the emo, crying, pregnant lady. All was taken out. So, I mean, that 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 is definitely an example of a female character that's just watered down and sanitized from being this strong figure to being this really weak figure. That really is too bad, because she had a lot of promise, I think, and it just kind of went out the window. Yeah, so... I think I think we've pretty much covered Star Wars, so thanks for talking with me. And uh, we'll go back to the studio.